I mean, uh, you you get what you're looking at. So I wrote a book about white supremacy being the dominant motivating force among the people of the entire planet called Earth. That people think about that more than they think about anything. Racism. Racism. <laughs> I mean, race comes first before anything, before you start talking about anything. I don't care about what your religion is, uh, you know, as long as, you know, unless your religion is the religion of white supremacy. I mean, you know, and then everything else is just a whole bunch of this and that. I mean, but this thing about what color somebody is, that's the first order of business when you get ready to do business on this planet called Earth. In the minds of whom? In the minds of those white people, not all white people, but in the minds of those white people who believe in white supremacy. Mm -hmm. That's the first order of business. Everything else is way down on the list. I mean, sometimes black people try to say, well, you know, oh, what these white folks want, they, all they want is just some money. Well, that's not true. <laughs> That's not true. The white supremacists already are the masters of money, all of the money. I mean, they, they, they get money because they are the masters of money. All money that's worth anything comes from them. You know, so they're not scuffling around trying to find some black people to give them some money. Black people are scuffling around trying to find some white people to give them some money. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. All right, all over the planet. Hmm. Black people who manufactured their own money have to have to have that money verified or credentialized by the white supremacists. Otherwise, the money is not money. It's just a whole bunch of confetti. It's just if it's made out of paper, it's just paper. That's all. It has no value. You can't buy anything with it unless the white supremacists say you can buy something with it. That goes to show you the awesome power of the system of white supremacy. So the white supremacists, I've often heard that from black people sometimes. Oh, Fuller, you're talking about white supremacy and whatnot. I mean, man, hey, you know. I mean, they just, they just like everybody else. They just want some money. I mean, no, no. White supremacists want something else more important than money. That's white supremacy. Once you got white supremacy, you got everything. Not only money, you got land, you got the oceans, you got all the fish in the sea, you got everything. That's what white supremacy means, having everything. Not just some things, everything. Mm -hmm. And you definitely have all of the non-white people under your thumb. Black, brown, red, yellow, wherever they happen to be. And so that's what that's about. Okay. So it's normal, getting back to the question. That's situation normal. Take that in stride, ladies. If you go into work in a nursing home, expect to be called the N-word all day long. Expect that. I mean, say that's business as usual. And also look at yourself for what you are on that job. You're a prisoner of war. You're not what you call just a uh, employee. Okay. You are a slave prisoner of war in the system of white supremacy. Okay. And the white supremacists are expressing themselves in that nursing home. So what else is new? You're a prisoner of war of the white supremacists in a nursing home that has white supremacists. Okay. <laughs> Calling for a white supremacist to call a black person the N-word is therapy. I mean, actually, they consider themselves getting well, trying to hold on to their minds, because that's where their minds have always been. I mean, they lose that. They have really lost everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, they depend on that. The world is run on the basis of racism. I mean, you lose, you know, you lose the very thing that's been supporting you all, all of your days. It's been giving you your incentive. It's been giving you your pride. It's been giving you everything that you want to build your families on. 
and, and you know, and putting money in the bank and going out and looking for a job and getting to be an executive in an office and whatnot. What is this all about if you're white in a system of white supremacy? It's about white supremacy. So naturally, if you begin to lose your mind, you hold on to the things that help you to have a mind in the way that you're accustomed to having it. And that is, hey, there is a person with color in his or her skin. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to mistreat that person so that I can get my incentive back. So I can, you know, if I'm losing my mind, so I can get my mind back. Because to me, that is sanity. If I'm a white supremacist, if I am a white person who is a white supremacist, sanity is being able to d dominate and mistreat a person of color. That's the definition of being sane. Being able to do that with nobody being having the power or the incentive to stop you that you can just do it and always do it and build everything that you do on that and like i said you get everything you know your incentive comes from that okay you're wanting that word want w-a-n-t everything that you want comes from that you lose that you lose it all it's like working in a hospital in a prison hospital and you're a prisoner and so the people in the hospital, I mean, you know, might not be prisoners, but you're working as a prisoner in the hospital. Yes. So you remember the fact that you are a prisoner, a prisoner of war, because if you are classified as non-white and you're on this planet, you were born in captivity. In captivity to whom? Every white person that believes in white supremacy. So you look at it like that. And therefore, you don't get offended because this goes with the territory. Okay. You've been captured. Okay. You were in a war and you were captured. I mean, you didn't declare the war. The war was declared on you, on your ancestors. Mm -hmm. And you were born in prison. Okay. Because your ancestors, if you're black, non-white, were born in prison. All right? And that's what you should do. You should use this as a learning situation. This is an excellent place to study. Just like any prison of war, you study the prison that you're in and everything that goes on in it and take notes, all right? Hey, you can start writing your own book, you know, <laughs> which is what you what? should do. That's what I would do. What? You know, the more they did this, you know, walking around saying the N-word and all like that, the mm -hmm. more patients that did it, I'd say, okay, well, yeah, just fine, you know. i just take note of it, what not. I'd say, you know, I'm gathering what? In wartime, and that's where we are, you're gathering intelligence. See, this is, a, this is not a social thing. Mm -hmm. This is not a feel-good situation. There's nothing to feel good about in the system of racism. Black people have to get that in our minds. Okay. We're always looking for something to be happy about, and this is normal. Okay. Everybody wants to be happy. But you're a prisoner of war, all right? Okay. So you have to take your happiness in thinking about when you are not going to be a prisoner of war. That's where your pleasure comes from. If you want to keep your sanity, 